In this video, we want to see how to do data modeling for a slowly changing dimension using Power Query and a standard pivot table. Our fact table has the employee as the grain for summarizing sales. But over here, we have the team. And the dimension employee has a changing attribute. That means team A is listed twice. And as time goes on, for example, January, that's the set of employees. But between February and March, these are the employees. If our goal is to use a standard pivot table to get a report like this that shows us team and employees and how their sales change over time, we're going to have to transform this table so that it becomes a table with a unique identifier for the employee and the team. And we're going to have to add a marker for each row that tells us the correct grain employee and team. Now in this video, we'll use Power Query and a standard pivot table. Next video, we'll see how to use Power Pivot and how to create a data model pivot table. The difference will be, well, it will be easier to create the standard pivot table, but we won't be able to show all of the employees if they didn't have sales. Whereas with our data model pivot table, that's probably what we want. We want to see all the names for the team, even when they didn't have sales. So for our slowly changing dimension, we have four videos. 33 is the one we're doing right now. Now we're going to take both of these tables, bring them into Data, Power Query, and Get and Transform, make our transformations. And we're not going to load them back to the Excel worksheet. We'll simply connect the query to our pivot table report. Now I've already imported this one. I click in D Team, click From Table Range. That opens up the Power Query window. Over here on the left, I'm going to open Queries. I see two. I'm going to rename this D Employee Team and Enter. We're going to scroll over. We want to change the data type. Click on the first. Hold Shift. Click on the other one. Right click. Change Type. Down to Date. I'm going to replace what's in the automatic step. Replace Current. Our goal is to take this first record and repeat it three times, once for Sue, Chantel, and Desiree. We can easily do that by selecting the date columns. I'm holding Control, click, click. Now right click down to Unpivot Other Columns. When we do this, we have exactly what we want. The first three records repeat the elements from the first row with one, two, three employees, exactly what we want. Now attribute, right click, remove, double click value. We'll call this employee key and enter. Now in the next two videos, Power Pivot and Power BI Desktop, we'll actually have to add a unique identifier because we're going to build a relationship. But since we're simply going to build a standard pivot table and we don't need to deal with a relationship, that table is done. Now we come up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2, only create a connection. Click OK. Now we have our two queries. We need to open up F Sales, so double click with our F Sales table selected. In order to summarize these sales by the team over here, we're going to have to add an extra column and look up the team name based on date and employee. That means for every row in this table, we're going to have to use that lookup table. Now if I just use D employee team in every row, every single row will have to re-look up the results from that query. So instead of doing that, I'm going to add a step here that pulls the lookup table over and buffers it. When we buffer a table, it simply means we brought it over, stored the table as static values, and then it doesn't have to go and retrieve the lookup table for every row. Selecting the last step, I want to add a new step by clicking F of X. Up in the formula bar, I'm going to highlight and type table.buffer tab. Now the table we want to buffer is D employee. I see it there, so I hit tab. When I hit Enter, I have pulled that lookup table over into the F sales query as a static table. Now I want to rename this step so F2, buffered LT for lookup table, and Enter. Now think about what we did. We're in F sales, but we're totally allowed to pull a different query into the F sales query. We're also allowed to, at any point, refer to any previous steps. Now, the buffer table is just pulling the lookup table over. I actually want to add a column to this table. So I'm going to select Buffer Table, come up to F of X, 
highlight. And when I type CH, look at that. The drop down allows me to pull a previous step down below buffered LT tab. Now if I hit Enter, that's the table. But what I really want to do is add that extra column. So up in the formula bar, and then table dot add column is our function, open parentheses. The first argument is going to be the table, comma. The name of the new column is going to be something like team name. Now we're going to type a comma. And we need the lookup table in each row. So I'm going to say each. That allows us to do some action in each row. Buffered lookup table. There it is. Now this is not what we want. That's the full table that we eventually need to filter. But let's just close parentheses and hit Enter and see, sure enough, we are allowed in this step right here to add an extra column and show the lookup table in each row. Now for this row right here, we have a date and an employee. The table.addColumn function will allow us to access both of those items. So as the formula copies down, for each new row, we can access those two values. And then we'll compare those two values to the employee key column and the start and the end date. And in that way, we'll be able to pull out the correct team name from our lookup table. Now if we look at our formula, we're going to have to wrap the table.selectRow function around our buffered lookup table to filter it. But that means we're going to have back-to-back -back functions. And both of them use custom functions as an argument. So we don't want to use the each keyword. In order to access the date and employee for each row, we're going to have to define a variable here. Then we're going to have to define a second variable inside our table.selectRows. So our variable we're going to use to access these two columns in each row, we define it inside of parentheses, OT. That's the name of the variable. I like OT because it means the outside table. Then I have to use the go to operator, equal sign, greater than symbol. That means everything after the go to defines what we do in each row. Well, we need to use the table.selectRows. Open parentheses. Now in table.selectRows, there's our table to filter, comma. The second argument is where we define our variable to access the columns in the lookup table. So we define our variable in open parentheses. I'm going to call this variable inside table in our parentheses and then the go to operator. Now in order to filter this down to our single team name, we have three logical tests. The first one is please compare employee name from this row with the entire employee key column. So outside table, and then square brackets, the name of the column. Are you equal to the inside table, square brackets, employee key? Now let's close parentheses on table.selectRows. Close parentheses on table.addColumn. Then when I hit Enter, and now look at that. We filter down to just GG. In the second row, we have two records for Sue. Now we need to compare date to the lower and upper limits. Now let's open up the formula bar, and I'm in a backspace, backspace. We need to use the AND logical test operator, AND, all in lowercase, outside table, square brackets, date. That's that date right there. Are you greater than or equal to inside table, square brackets, Start date, that is that column right there. And outside table, square brackets, date. We're asking another question of that date right there. Are you also less than or equal to the upper limit? Inside table, square brackets, end date. Now we have our three conditions inside the second argument of table.selectRows. And that is so cool because we're allowed to get values row by row using OT or the full column from the table down here using IT. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Now when we hit Enter, we're going to get a surprising result. Right here, we can see this is a full table. So for every row, we've isolated the correct single record. But what do we need? We need the team name. In M code, when you have a table, you have to do a two-way lookup, first getting the row, then the column. Now every single table has a single record. So watch this. We're going to backspace. That whole thing is that table. 
we have to use the positional index operator, curly brackets. Now, M code in Power Query is base 0. So the first record is always 0. Now, let's just see if this will extract the correct row or record. Close parentheses and Enter. And sure enough, it does. Now we need the team column. So up in the formula bar, backspace, square bracket, and the name of the column. Square brackets are our field access operator. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, we have looked up our team. We have employee and team to help us summarize sales. Now one last thing, I want this as text. Instead of adding a new step, I'm simply going to come to the fourth argument in table.addcolumns, comma. The data type is going to be text, close parentheses. And now when I hit Enter, I have just what I want. Now I'm going to come over here and F2, rename it, three-way lookup, and Enter. Now the beautiful thing is, is we can load this table and use this result in a standard pivot table. Close and load. Now I want to use this in a pivot table. So right click, load to. And there it is, this amazing option in import data, build a pivot table. I want to make sure and put it somewhere like F13. Click OK. Now we can drag team name down to row, employee down to row. If we drag date down to columns, the standard pivot table automatically groups, drag sales down to values. Right click number formatting, number, comma, zero, click OK. F2, and in the label, I'm going to indicate the unit. And there's our finished report. In this video, we started with a slowly changing dimension or changing attribute, used Power Query to transform the tables, loaded it to a standard pivot table, and built our report. Now, one thing about this report, there's Team 2 and only JoJo had a sale. That's because in this table, JoJo is the only person that had a sale for Team A2. If we actually wanted to list all of the sales names, which is probably the case, then we don't want a standard pivot table. We want a data model pivot table. And that's the next video. So we'll see you next video, number MSPTDA 34.